a U.S. military base located on Puerto Rico could be very instrumental in helping it get back on its feet. My next guest is stationed at Fort Buchanan, traveling throughout the island to assess the damage and determine how our military can best help the people there. We're bringing her back at, for an update today. We got so much great information. Brigadier General Dustin Schultz is with the U.S. Army Reserve First Mission Support Command. Uh, General, you're with us? Absolutely. All right, so you've had a chance now to see firsthand. I mean, the pictures, well, they tell such huge stories, but what is the story of what is needed and how you think you can meet those needs expeditiously? Well, it's key that we all understand the challenges regarding infrastructure, power, road, facility damage. Our installations, uh, our homes have been stretched beyond imagination. And as your meteorologist articulated, we've gotten way more rain than we are used to. And all the foliage is ripped off the trees. And that has put a lot of systems uh, in places uh, that they are not operable. And people are in blackout zones where they can't easily communicate with their loved ones. And it puts them in a bit of angst. So blackout zone, that draws a different picture in our minds because that's not just electrical power, that's utilities. That means you're physically cut off from being able to get to people too. That's cell towers, that's a whole host of things. Yes, as most of the roads are impassable, a large number of trees have fallen across roadways and have sheared off uh, power lines. Uh, heavy winds have, you know, the roadways and housing areas almost impassable. And many facilities, uh, whether they're here on Fort Buchanan or across the island, uh, have minor or severe damage. And uh, we have to look uh, individually across the island and here on Fort Buchanan on what the requirements are and ensure that we support civil authorities appropriately and prepare also accordingly for Fort Buchanan and the support of the services here. I, well. I want to talk specifically about that river situation that Rick Rackney had said the river may crest, what, 20 feet above where it normally would because of all of the flooding. You're talking about infrastructure. Are there any dams or anything uh, shoring up some of that water that you guys are particularly concerned about? Uh, the, we do know that there is a reservoir that has uh, had some challenges and they've had to release water, but I don't have the particulars on it. Um, I believe some of the good news is is that uh, I've been told that most of the airports will likely come back online on Friday. Are you going to try to get people off that island? I, I mean, I know uh, both our Army Reserve and the U.S. Coast Guard were pulling people from other islands during Hurricane Irma, and many of them went here to Puerto Rico uh, for a few days so that they could wait for the storm to pass while it just devastated other places. True. America's Army Reserve's stand prepared to assist, but that really uh, is directed uh, by FEMA and the dual status commander, mm -hmm. and, and we support them in those roles. Yeah. And uh, we are already providing key support to some of the citizens that were displaced uh, from the East Virgin Islands uh, with our mm -hmm. 597th water and bath unit, uh, providing showers and laundry facilities uh, at the convention center. And we have other formations as well that stand prepared as called on to really engage, uh, whether they be engineers or petroleum units or civil affairs units. Uh, our, our teams uh, are absolutely looking at the key ways in which they can help yeah. uh, the people of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's a big job. Is this as, as big as you've ever seen it? It is as big as I've ever seen it. And I really have to stress that this is a team effort. This is a whole of government effort. And I, I am absolutely thrilled to be part of people that are so concerned about the welfare of the people of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. They're rallying together. You have the governor, the dual status commander, America's Army Reserve, FEMA, PRIMA, all standing ready to reach out uh, and support soldiers, families, citizens in need. You know, the other thing, too, is uh, we, we also encourage uh, families and soldiers to be contacting their units because, as mm. we articulated, this time of black comms, 
uh, per se. You know, mm. there is sporadic cell tower capability, uh, but you'll hear from people that I got out on phone but wasn't able to get in on text. Okay. Uh, so they're using different capabilities, and sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. And so I would tell people that are not on the island uh, to be patient but be persistent. Got it. Black comms, communications, blackout zone. I, I hear that lingo. It means that we need to be in constant contact as much as we can. Uh, Army Brigadier General Schultz, thank you very much for a second update uh, two days in a row. We appreciate it. It gives us an idea of how things are coming along. Thank you.